Hello, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to our opening ceremony of uh, for Teachers Evo for 2017. My name is Nelly Deutsch, and I'm going to be uh, doing this presentation. Uh, if you could just add in the chat box where you're from and anything else you'd like to add, you're welcome to use the chat box. Um, for anything, to connect, write about anything. Use it um, as a way to uh, get as much information as you can. You may ask questions as we go. This is a really short presentation of the opening ceremony. It's just a little bit to get you started. Uh, over 300, I believe 400 people registered for this session, but they may have forgotten. So it's being recorded both um, as a live class, as it is, and through uh, another system that I'm using to record and to add it to YouTube or Vimeo if uh, you don't get YouTube. So everything is recorded and uh, there's no problem. The value of being in a live online class is that you can use the chat box and uh, that's a wonderful feature. Uh, we can also uh, copy, you can copy, but we can also copy the chat at the end. So whatever is there, you can take with you. Generally, there are lots of uh, links. I've added a link to a YouTube video where I actually uh, demonstrate the layout of Moodle for Teachers Evil. So if you just add in the chat box uh, where you're from, I see we've got Argentina, uh, let me see if I can see everything here. I'll just move uh, things around. You'll see what I moved around when you watch the recording. So I see um, Argentina. I see Ecuador. Welcome. I see Canada. Hi, Vicky. Prince Edward Island. I hope it's not too cold there. I'm sure it's drier than in Toronto. And who else do I see here? Let's see. Uh, Moscow. Okay. Uh, Smirnova, is that it? I have a friend, Ludmilla Smirnova, and we've got Italy. So um, you don't have to tell your country, you can just tell us <laughs> your nationality. Uh, we'll figure it out. And uh, let's see. So we've got Italy. All right, so just keep introducing yourself as we go. All right, so how many of you, just uh, with a show of hands, you can give me thumbs up like that. How many of you came from the Moodle? I didn't really uh, share this um, anywhere. <laughs> so I didn't remind anybody. I didn't share it. I just sent a very quick announcement a couple of minutes ago, and that's it. Uh, to tell you the truth, I've been really busy with CLIL and the other EVO sessions. I'm mentoring CLIL, and I'm supporting... Um, about six uh, EVO sessions on the Moodle. So lots of uh, work, lots of troubleshooting. And so uh, it's been unfortunate. But uh, whoever is here, welcome. Let's see if we've got any of the presenters here. If you could just add um, a hand up, that would be great. I'm going to share the, uh, the link to the EVO session. It's ID number 88. That's how you know. So there is the link. If you haven't joined yet, you're welcome to join. And people will be coming in uh, as we go. Hello, Sarah. I recognize your name. Um, it's been really exciting <laughs> reading your uh, uh, short stories. Your stories, uh, some, well, two of them are true and one is not true. But it's still a story, and that's the idea behind it, uh, is just writing stories. And we love to tell stories, but uh, not all stories are true. We know that. So two of these, your stories are true and one is not, and you had to guess. Uh, this is a way you might want to use this uh, method. It's a way of getting uh, the participants to engage with each other and not necessarily with the moderator or the instructor or the teacher. It takes the teacher away from the equation, uh, which is good sometimes because as teachers, we tend to... <laughs> overwhelm our students and uh, we become the focus and very often the students are not the focus. So the idea is to get the participants or the students to be the focus and not us. 
Right, which isn't always easy for many of us as teachers. We're so used to controlling, so it's hard for us to stay out. All right, what you'll be learning about uh, Moodling and about teaching online and collaborating and lots of other things, uh, not only from uh, whatever we have to offer, but also from each other. And I think that's the advantage of uh, learning online is that we learn from each other. And I can't stress that more, that peer learning is so important. And we know that. That's what we want our students to do. The moderators are the following. I only ask if you have a question that you put a question mark, just one, before your question. So, you know, it's easy to, um, to catch. There are three moderators uh, this year. This is the sixth year of uh, Moodle for Teachers Evo. Um, I'm going to be moderating, and I think Katerina is also a doctor. I should have written doctor there as well. She has a PhD. Um, I'm coming from Toronto, Canada. Thomas Hodgers is originally from the UK, from Liverpool. Yay, Liverpool! And he's coming to us from Venezuela. So we've got different time zones here, a little bit. And we've got uh, Ekaterina, who's coming to us from... Um, Moscow, I think, right? Yes, exactly, the state. And you can read a little bit about her. She's a researcher. She's written lots of seven books, in fact, and uh, 40 articles. Uh, she's well known in the field of TESOL, teaching English to speakers of other languages. She's quite a professional, and we're so lucky to have uh, Ekaterina with us as one of the moderators. She has been responding uh, to you, and... Um, I'm sure you got to know her. Uh, she's been teaching English as a foreign language for more than 15 years. Uh, Tom Hodgers and I have been working together uh, in these Moodle for Teachers uh, sessions and courses and MOOCs uh, since 2009. Tom started as a participant in uh, Moodle for Teachers, and he very quickly became a moderator. So that's what happens. Today, you're a teacher, and tomorrow, today you're a student, sorry, you're a participant, and tomorrow you're a moderator, you're a teacher, because we're all teachers. So basically, it's supporting one another. So hopefully next year, you'll be one of the moderators. Uh, let me know if you're okay in the chat box, if I'm not speaking too quickly or too slowly, or if you're having any kind of technical issues, use the chat box. Uh, you're welcome. So I haven't seen anything. I'm looking for questions, um, and I don't see anything. <laughs> so uh, every question is brilliant. I always say this because it's yours, and we all learn from questions. It's always a better idea to uh, learn through questions because that's us. We want to know and so we'll remember instead of just being bombarded with information. So sometimes actually I start these sessions with your questions and that's what uh, the session is about. It's about your questions. Okay, so uh, Anastasia Smirnova, I love that name. Uh, thank you uh, for that comment. Um, but feel free, even if you're new, don't feel, I know what it feels like, because I used to feel it when I started learning online, that, you know, we, we think, well, everybody knows more than we do. So we're not going to, I'm not going to ask questions because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not in, I'm out, I'm an outsider. So even if you're new, feel free to ask questions because we learn. Uh, from questions. I learned so much about how to teach from my students' questions and from the participants. So any question is brilliant and we need it. So feel free to ask just anything. All right. Um, a little bit about me. I'm a Canadian EFL teacher. I've been teaching English as a foreign language for over 35 years, almost 40 years, in fact. Uh, and uh, I've been teaching around the world, not just in Toronto, Canada, but in the Middle East and uh, South America a little bit and uh, Europe, uh, the Far East, different parts of the world. I don't usually advertise that. I don't uh, say anything about my past too much because I think that it's more important to what we do today than what we did in the past. But I am a very experienced English language teacher. 
um, more to high school students because that's what I love best than to uh, higher education because that's where I get bored. I prefer um, troublematic students because it's more exciting and more challenging and creative than, uh, you know, students at university that are all quiet and sitting there and, you know, not really uh, jumping up and down. I like when students jump up and down uh, because then I can uh, enjoy learning with them and not just speaking at them, which happens at university. I've been um, teaching online with my high school students and uh, since 1992 and using Moodle with my high school students. Uh, since 2003, I think I was the first Canadian to use Moodle um, in the high in high school, and um, I've been using WizIQ since 2007. This is the WizIQ platform. I've used other platforms. I currently also use Congrea on the Moodle and Zoom. I also use Adobe Connect when I was coordinator at ITEFL, a Young Learners SIG. So I'm quite experienced with Adobe Connect as well. I also used Illuminate or uh, BB Collaborate as it's called and other platforms. I also use different wikis. I'm an advocate of Wikimedia. I used a uh, Wiki Educator. I use Google Drive, lots of technology, but there's another side to me and that's the alternative medicine person. I uh, am a Reiki practitioner. I practice Reiki, the Silva Method, mindfulness. And uh, did I leave anything out? Um, and that's it. Tom Hodgers, I think I said everything that I can about him. Um, let's see. Oh, there's a question. Love questions. Will we be looking at I t uh, TEFL tools for making it? Oh, yes, of course. Yes. You don't have to look for them. They're on the Moodle, Mike. So, Mike, they're right there. Lots of um, activities that you can create on the Moodle, like uh, games and crossword puzzles and hangman and, uh, yeah, lots of drop. Yes, drag and drop on the quizzes. You're in the right place if you're looking for activities to create for students. You'll start doing that next week when you become a teacher with teacher rights. So week one, I'll get to that. Week one is just basically about being a student and getting to know the platform and each other. So it's getting acquainted, not only with each other, with me, of course, Tom and Ekaterina, but also with the uh, platform so you can learn to navigate. And of course, the uh, video tools. Yes, you're gonna love it. I love Moodle. So uh, I've been called the, uh, the Moodle lady. There's also a Moodle fairy, so I'm the Moodle lady. Um, I'm very passionate about uh, using technology, but also uh, with the face-to-face. -face. I, I, um, I appreciate the face-to-face -face environment very much. Uh, beginners, yes. Uh, beginners, everyone's a beginner really, because um, you know things change all the time. Technology changes. So we always have to learn something new. So um, I think we're all, new. The only difference is uh, once you start using technology, you gain confidence to learn new technologies. And if you're brand new to it, you feel uncomfortable, but you have no reason to feel uncomfortable because we're all there. We're all new. There's always something new. So if you use it a lot, you become an expert and then it changes. I mean, look at Google Drive. You know, I used to teach it one way and then all of a sudden, oh my gosh, it looks different. So um, things are always changing. So Mar Marcella, uh, a beginner is a great place to be. Think of when you started teaching. We're all beginners. We're all new. Every year we feel scared before we go into the classroom, like it's our first year, even though we're not new anymore. So that's how it is. This is the layout of uh, the Moodle. Notice um, there's the left, the center, and the right. Number one is the name of the course. 
because notice there are chunks here. So that's where I am right now. And then to the left of that is the category and then your dashboard. Uh, if you go into My Courses, you'll be able to get all your courses, of course. Number two is the center. These tabs are the sections. They're called Topic Sections. And you'll be able to create your own uh, in week three when you become a manager of a Moodle course. And number three is your progress. I added it today because I realize that it's very, very important so that you get your badges to know exactly where you are, what you have done, and what you need to do. So there's a progress bar. The things on the left and the right are called blocks. And we'll be talking about blocks, and you'll be creating your own blocks, uh, opening them up in week three. On the left block, you'll find the navigation. The navigation is really important because it has information about you. Uh, the dashboard, which is your dashboard, the site home where you can go to the main Moodle front page, um, and then the current course, which is Moodle for Teachers. If you're taking other courses, you'll see a list of your courses. And then there are the list of participants. And then the badges. If you open up where it says badges, you'll find the course badges and then the criteria for each badge. And then there's an overview and everything else, all the center that I showed you before, everything that's here is also available on the left under topic sections as well as under the navigation bar your navigation bar. I'm glad you're here too, Anna, because it's going to be a wonderful and exciting adventure. And we've been doing this for a long time. So we're learning, we're still learning what our students need, but I think that uh, we're getting there. Right, next on the right, you'll find Exibus ePortfolio. Notice the Exibus ePortfolio has my CV. So you can add your CV and uh, play around with that. But what's important is my portfolio artifacts. You can add everything from Moodle for Teachers to your portfolio. You can also add your ideas. You can share your ideas and so on. You can also export everything at the end so that you have all your work, all the video tutorials and everything that you've created, plus everything from the um, session, course session, Moodle for Teachers Evo, in your file. And you can have it on your computer and do whatever you want with it. In addition, there's the administration you may unintentionally unenroll yourself. I suggest you don't do it because you may lose a lot of your work. So don't enroll unless you really want to. Okay, and I hope you don't. Next are the grades. There aren't, there are some grades, so you'll see your grades. And there's a question bank. I think Thomas has mentioned the question bank. That's based on your questions about the system. And competencies, don't worry about them now because we're not working on them, but you'll learn about competencies later. And you'll find activities. These are the activities that uh, we have added to Moodle for Teachers Evo session, but there are about 200 or at least over 100 activities, and you'll be learning about them. These are just the few that we've added. So there are choices, forums, group self-selections, podcasts, resources, and the WizIQ class, which is an activity. You'll be able to create a WizIQ class in week three, I believe, as a manager. Are there any questions so far? Just let me know, put a question mark. Here's a question. Can other participants see my Exibus portfolio? Only if you share it. 
If you don't make your work public, no one will be able to see it. It's your private portfolio. <laughs> Okay, so let's see if there are any other questions. Thank you for putting the question mark at the end. If you could put it at the beginning, that would help because then I'll see it uh, right in my face and I'll be able to respond better. Sue says, hi, Sue. I can't find this page. All right, so you're talking about maybe the uh, Moodle for Teachers Evo uh, session, course session. They don't call these courses on Evo. They're called sessions. All right, for political reasons. So there it is. I hope that helps. Um, no, that's not, no, never say sorry. <laughs> never. You don't need to say sorry. I just mentioned it for other people. Just, I just want to be as helpful as I can. So if you put a question mark, it'll catch my attention better. It's just my eyes. Uh, you're, you're fine. Uh, the page, oh, the PPT, the slide you mean. Uh, the last one, do you mean... Uh, this one? Is that the one you mean, Sue? Yes. Okay. You want to know where this is? All right. So this is on this page. Okay. It's there. But you'll find the information on the left side of the page of every Moodle for Teachers Evo 17 page. This information is on each one of the pages. You'll always see it. Okay, it's uh, static, it's there. Okay, everything, the navigation is on the left of each of your pages. Uh, Exhibit portfolio is on each of the pages, the administration and the activities. Okay, it's always there. I hope that you're there on the page. It'll make it easier to understand. All right. In addition, uh, oh, no, you can't click it from here. Do you mean to click? Um, sorry. Do you mean you can only click from the chat box? I apologize for that. WizIQ does not allow you to click on the whiteboard. It used to be able to, but it's they stopped it many years ago. So, uh, Sue, the only pl and everyone else, the only place you can click, and that's a wonderful question. It's a very important question. Uh, so if you want the PowerPoint, the PowerPoint will appear uh, later on on the Moodle. It'll appear in the folder for the first uh, event. You get a different page. Uh, can you share what page you get? Did you go into the 88? Maybe I gave you the wrong page. Let me check, okay, just in case. Nope. I've given you the right page. Uh, let's see how many people are here. See, I don't, Sue, I don't see you on the page. But I do see uh, Oksana and Maria Rosaria and Mike I see and myself. I only see three people. So you may need to, maybe you're not enrolled. I'm not sure. Oh, that's the page. I see enroll. You need, I see, you need to enroll. Do you see the enroll? In the, uh, in the link, but you are enrolled. Uh, there was an enroll. You might need to enroll. Let me log out and just so I see what you see. And everybody else is seeing what I see too. You log in by going into one of the uh, social networks. There is uh, Google, Dropbox, LinkedIn, and um, Facebook. Microsoft. I hope I didn't miss anything. Let's see what's happening here. Uh, you'll see enroll. I think on the page that you're in, you'll probably see enroll at the bottom. Click on the enroll and then it might ask you to, uh, you can't go in as a guest, it'll tell you to enroll. Uh, yes, I'll be able to check all of this uh, very, very soon. Angela, maybe you haven't. The best way to enroll is uh, if you go to, let me sh share the uh, YouTube video with you. Thank you for the questions. That's why these live online sessions are so important because uh, it's easy to answer right away, even though we answer, I try to answer right away on the Moodle, but uh, it's also This is Nelly Deutsch, and today I'm going to show you how to log in. 
Okay, I'm going to share the link to how to enroll on the Moodle. Okay, so here is a, a video on how to enroll. Okay, so if you click on that, you'll get all the explanation on how. Oh, you're in now, Sue? Okay, that's wonderful. Sorry about that. I should have asked. Okay. So, Angela, in order to know if you enrolled or not, uh, you need, you will be able to see if you're in. And here is the link again. Let me get the link. You'll know if you enrolled if you go in. If you go in right away, it means you enrolled. If you can't go in, it means you need to watch the video on how to enroll. The only reason I knew that Angela was very close because I saw the enroll. And uh, the enroll button showed that you were at a certain stage of enrollment, but you hadn't completed it. If not, Angela, I'll try to do it later on. Okay. All right. So another plugin or I should call it uh, block. Okay, these are all plugins. Everything on Moodle is a plugin, actually. Um, Mike, uh, Maria, hello, Razira. Maria, I saw you and I didn't see you here. I'm glad you made it. All right, you'll see the upcoming events at least a week. And well, I, actually, I think we've got them all. I tried to get them all in there. So these are all the events. Notice the time is in my time. But if you go to your profile and you add your location, the time in your zone, you will see these in your time zone. I also added a clock on the right where you can see the time of the server, which is my time, it's Eastern Standard Time, and your time. So you'll be able to compare the times. So make sure you go into your profile and change the settings so that they are in your time zone. And if you travel, you just change it. So the introduction is today, and then there's uh, resources and activities, that's next week at the same time. And then blocks on the Moodle is week three on Monday, the 23rd of January at the same time. And then the next one is Monday, teaming up to design a Moodle course. And then, of course, the final showcase. Notice that there is a break for C017, which will be taking place from, and you can join, it's on the Moodle, February 3 to February, oh, I made a mistake there, sorry. February 3rd to the 5th. There is a conference, 30 hours, uh, 10 hours every day for three days. So it's uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. There are badges and there's a certificate. It's going to be really exciting in the middle of uh, the Evo sessions. And so we won't have a live session then, but there'll be presenters from around the world. And I think it's a, going to be a real treat. So that's the upcoming events. Next to that on the right is the latest news. It was hidden until a couple of hours ago. I made it unhidden. It was my mistake. I apologize. The latest news announcements. Uh, there was the kickoff. And then uh, today's session is there. And here's the clock that I was talking about. Notice when I took the image, and I use Jing to cut the images, to capture the images and bring them on my PowerPoint. So there's a clock here. Notice the time just before the session was 9.43 and uh, my time was 9.51, because my computer is off. <laughs> you notice it's off by seven minutes. I have no idea, eight minutes, sorry. I have no idea why, but the real time is was 9.43. So the real time now is probably not 10.30 on my, or 10.29. My computer says 10.37. I can't fix it for the life of me, so. Um, that's on Eastern Standard Time. Oh, you're in, Angela. Okay, excellent. I'm glad to hear that. Wonderful. All right. So keep asking questions. As I said, every question is the best because it's from you. So next is are the badges, of course. And the way it works is uh, there are four badges. 
So you need to uh, get the four badges in order to get the certificate. So four badges equal two certificates. Yes, not one. You're going to get two. Isn't that exciting? Two for the price of one. So uh, Moodle for Teachers Evo for 2007 is a lucky session because you get four, you get two certificates. Uh, the first certificate is uh, the one you're going to get at the end of uh, week one. Uh, it's I think there's one certificate missing here. <laughs> cheap. <laughs> yeah, it's cheap. Very cheap. That's right. Uh, hello, Ekaterina. Glad, glad you made it. I'm just wondering, um, I don't know if I think there are more than uh, four. I may be mistaken. Maybe I only grabbed four uh, certificates. Maybe there's a five. Maybe it's an introduction. I think there's an introduction there, too, if my memory holds me right. I created uh, Moodle for Teachers uh, many months ago. I like to uh, create courses in advance. So um, that's what I do. All right. So uh, the uh, certificates. Oh, Tom is here. Hi, Tom. Welcome. Tom, can you check? I think there are more than four, four uh, badges. I think there are at least five for um, Moodle for Teachers Evo 7. Yeah, there are five. Okay, so I got it. There are. There's an introduction one, too. Sorry, I for some reason I missed it. Yeah, so there are five. The first one is the introduction. And then there's uh, two, actually, in week one. And then there's teaching and learning. There is the teacher practice area in week two. And then there's the Moodle practice area in week three. And the course practice area in week four, where you're going to be working together in uh, teams to uh, design and develop your Moodle course. The way we'll be working, as I said before, is through, through video tutorials. And uh, we'll be using um, Screencast-O-Matic mostly, but you can also use slide speech if you don't want to use your microphone and you want to add notes to your PowerPoint presentation. It's a lot longer, but um, I think uh, some people don't like to use their microphone or they have problems with their mics. Uh, you can also do it in different languages. This is something that we tried in Moodle MOOC. Uh, Moodle MOOC 9. By the way, you can also join Moodle MOOC uh, 10 in uh, in May. It's a five-week uh, Moodle training, but it's also for a, a managers of a Moodle site. So you get another certificate as a manager of a whole Moodle site, which is also exciting. This is only manager of a course. There you'll also become manager of a Moodle uh, site. So in May, uh, from May 1st until June. Which MOOC platform? Uh, the MOOC platform, it's Moodle 3.1, but the practice is going to be on Moodle 3.2, which is the latest Moodle. It's not as stable as Moodle 3.1, but uh, you'll have a chance to play around with that mic. I'm not sure what Future Learn is. It's, uh, it looks familiar. Um, so maybe you can help me out. MOOC. Ah, I see what you mean with as far as the MOOC. No, I started Moodle MOOCs in 2000. Uh, Tom, when was it? 2013, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Moodle. I was the first one in the world. We had my, uh, Martin Dogiamis come. Uh, it was in 2013, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. The end of May was our opening ceremony with... Um, so... This is uh, the official Moodle MOOC. They don't call theirs Moodle MOOC. They call theirs, I think, uh, Moodle something, Moodle Learning, because they didn't want to take the name. So yes, you're welcome. It's in the same platform. It's on Moodle uh, for teachers. You could even join right now, I believe. I'm not sure. I think it's open now. Uh, so you can uh, be there if you like. Yes, lots of exciting things on Moodle for teachers. Uh, it's really for teachers, but also for admin, if you're interested. Right, so the system that we use is teaching as a way to learn, which means that um, participants uh, teach as a way to learn. It's discovery learning, 
and creating videos to document the discovery learning. So you're actually um, going to be watching each other's discovery learning videos. So you can learn about uh, how others are doing things and compare it to how you did it. But actually, uh, you're doing it on the same things. So if you're going to, if you look at week one, you'll be uh, documenting uh, your profile, how to update your profile, for example. So you're going to be creating a video tutorial documenting your discovery, and other people will be doing the same thing. So other voices, and as I said, languages. So if you're Italian and you feel more comfortable in Italian, you can do the video in Italian. We did it in Moodle Muknan, as I said, and it turned out very good because it doesn't matter what language you're speaking in. We can follow it because of the screen. So it's actually a video capture of the screens as you go through them and you speak. And I'm going to show you in a minute one of them. All my videos I use and create with Screencast-O-Matic, just about all of them. So hello Ayat, good to see you and welcome. You'll be able to watch the beginning if you missed uh, whatever you missed. Right, so let's see if there are any questions. Um, oh, that was a question, am I late? You're never late. All right, so let's keep asking questions. Remember, it doesn't matter if it's related or not related, because if you are thinking of something you'd like to know, it's related. And that's how we should be uh, looking at our students. You know, sometimes we think, why is she asking or why is he asking that question? You know, is he just trying to disturb me? No, something popped up in their head and they want to know. What's wrong with that? You know, it's, uh, it's wonderful for everybody. We might just learn something from others' questions, related or not related. It's all learning, right? All right, so again, back to the moderators. I think everyone is here right now. Um, so I'm gonna leave it on this page and I'm going to share a video with me. Just let me know in the chat box. Hello, Elvira. Let me know in the chat box if you can see YouTube. Okay, just let me know if you can see YouTube. Uh, if you just give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. I hope it's up and not down. I believe I added it at the beginning. Let me just check for those of you that would like to um, watch it on your own or later on. I added it at the very beginning, but it was in the pre-class. So if it's in the pre-class, maybe you didn't get it. All right, so there it is, and we're gonna watch it. Are you ready? I'm going to mute my mic uh, so that we don't get echoes. So just let me know in the chat box with a thumbs up if you're ready or smiley or whatever you feel like. So I know you're ready. By the way, you'll be able to uh, schedule a class, a WizIQ class like this and practice on your own with all the tools. And you can also invite people, invite your family <laughs> or friends and, and, you know, have a meeting. It's up to you. All right. So I don't only see my funny face. Okay, I see Mike's thumb up. All right, so let's get started.